I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, distinguished colleagues, in recent days, the Ukrainian issue has uh, made headlines, global headlines, and has now been given pride of place at the UN Security Council and now the General Assembly. At the same time, Russian actions are being distorted and uh, thwarted and there is uh, the number of incredible fakes is staggering with the use uh, with uh, media outlets and social networks proliferating uh, these lies. For this reason today, I wish to focus on the real reasons for the crisis that has emerged and its possible consequences. I wish to emphasize the following. The root for the current crisis lies in the actions of Ukraine itself. For many years, it sabotaged and flouted its direct obligations under the Minsk package of measures. Just recently, very recently, there was a hope that in Kiev uh, they would reconsider and that they would indeed comply with what they signed on to back in 2015. For that, first and foremost, what was necessary was direct dialogue as set out in the document between Donetsk and Lugansk. However, the latest confirmation from the senior leadership of the, con uh, of the country was that Ukraine was unwilling to engage in this dialogue and they took st uh, uh, unwilling to take steps to grant special status to Donbass. Con and uh, as set out in the Minsk agreements, and this was actively supported by the Western patrons of Kiev, and this definitively persuaded us of the fact that we no longer have a right to allow the residents of Donbass to suffer any further. Insofar as Ukrainian provocations against uh, the people of Donbass in February did not end, in fact, they escalated, the leadership of DPR and LPR turned to us with a request to deliver military support in line with bilateral agreements on cooperation which were arrived at uh, with their recognition, concurrently with recognition, and this was a logical step to the ongoing, the persistent aggressive actions uh, undertaken by the Ukrainian regime, the Ukrainian authorities, which has uh, of late been actively uh, armed and incited by a number of states were under the misconception that with the, uh, the, uh, the, the indulgence of Western patrons and sponsors, they would be able to address the issues in Bas militarily. It is difficult otherwise. It would be difficult to explain the ongoing intensification of shelling and sabotage acts on the territory of the republics, which I mentioned. The people of Donbass and Lugansk conti uh, continued to have to take shelter in basements. Uh, there was a flood of refugees entering the Russian Federation, and the, yet still the nature of the Ukrainian Armed Forces operation did not change, and yet Western partners did not wish, uh, turned a blind eye to this, and they merely echoed Ukrainian tall tales about the allegations that Donbass people were shelling on themselves. Uh, the worsening uh, suffering of the residents of Donbass is something that has left Western sponsors unmoved in recent years, this discussion at the Security Council General Assembly, there was no empathy whatsoever, no compassion for the people of Donbass and Lugansk. It seems that these four million people simply don't exist for them. And as a result, uh, the ongoing threats targeting the people of LPR and DPR, given the lack of prospects for addressing the problems in the area under the Minsk operations due to the fail fail failure to fulfill them, the Russian president took a decision for a specially military, special military operation to be carried out in Donbass. Occupation of Ukraine is not part of, this, of these plans. The goal of the special operation is to protect the people who for eight years were subject to torment and, genoc and genocide by the key of regime. To that end, there is a we, we, there is a need to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine. We further will strive to hold accountable those who carried out countless brutal crimes against the people, uh, the, the residents, uh, including uh, residents of the Russian Federation. This decision was taken in line with Article 51 of the United Nations Charter with a sanction of the Federation Council of the Russian Federation in pursuant of the agreement on friendship and cooperation with DPR and LPR, I wish to recall further that the principle of sovereignty and territorial integrity of states 
uh, is something which we are being accused of breaching vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine. The Declaration on Principles of International Law on Friendly Relations Between uh, Peoples was adopted in 1970, and it needs to be unstintingly complied with with respect to states, I quote, complying in, uh, conducting themselves in compliance with the principle of equal rights and self-determination of peoples as described above and thus possessed of a government representing the whole people belonging to the territory without distinction as to race, creed, or color, end of quote. Today's uh, government of Ukraine is no such government. Moreover, during the special military operation, Russia has been exercising its right to self-defense from a regime that has been striving to gain access to nuclear weapons. The president of Ukraine explicitly stated this on 18 February during the Munich conference, and uh, this, I would recall, this statement that he delivered was met with applause by the participants of this conference. At the same time, Ukraine is seeking membership in NATO, where there is act, uh, Article 5 in effect, and as terrorists territorial claims to the Russian Federation. Hence, in, by leveraging Article 51 of the UN Charter, not only is Russia protecting itself from the nationalist threat, but Russia is also seeking to uphold the purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter on the soil of Donbass and Ukraine, ensuring that the main goal of the United Nations be upheld, namely to, uh, to prevent succeeding generations from a scourge of war. Unfortunately, it behooves us to note the very negative role played in all of this by Western colleagues led by the United States. Instead of, per, instead of compelling Kiev to comply with its obligations, instead they are merely inciting Kiev, egging it on, repeating the senseless mantra that their obligations and the Minsk agreements are not being complied with the Russian Federation, which I should like to recall and emphasize the Russian Federation is not a party to it. Moreover, our Western colleagues have shamelessly inundated the country with weapons, have sent to the country um, instructors and effectively incited Ukrainians uh, uh, who are facing a 120,000 strong military contingent uh, to in, pr prompted them to engage in armed provocation against the Donbass. Uh, this thereby, the Western countries have created a bubble that cannot but pop. Distinguished colleagues, discussing uh, t t today, it, in this discussion, it behooves us to note uh, that uh, back in t 2008, the Russian uh, president at the NATO uh, Bucharest Council uh, 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 cautioned that members of, North, uh, members of NATO should think three times before proudly say, stating that Ukraine and Georgia will join NATO, and this was um, uh, met. This was um, uh, portrayed as some kind of a great compromise, uh, w which uh, was immediately met with uh, action plans undertaken in Ukraine and Georgia to join uh, the alliance. At the same time, in 2014, there was a brutal anti-constitutional coup which took place in Kiev, as a result of which nationalists and radicals seized po uh, power. And their policy was to create an anti-Russia in Ukraine and to uh, ensure that it join NATO. And I will revisit that. For us, Ukraine joining NATO is a red line. First and foremost, from the military strategic uh, level, the deployment of NATO infrastructure in that country would uh, compel us to adopt measures in response, uh, uh, which, and this has placed us at the verge of conflict. For this reason, in December 2021, we proposed that, that agreements be arrived at with the U.S. and NATO uh, for security assurances to be provided uh, to the Russian Federation. However, our extended hand was unceremoniously, unceremoniously rebuffed by Americans and, and NATO representatives. It was proposed that we proposed that we continue to discuss secondary issues without consideration of our concerns. Moreover, uh, the question was not addressed as to uh, the uh, how the freedom of choosing alliances as set out in the OSCE aligns with the principles of indivisibility of security, which is of great importance to us. Probably many of you wonder what should be done now and what can role can the United Nations play in addressing the Ukrainian, process, uh, Ukrainian crisis. We believe that the UN can and should play its role, help to bring the stakeholders' positions closer together and and to eradicate the causes of conflict. The key role here, according to the Charter, should be played by and fall allies with the Security Council. However, 
attempt to calmly discuss this issue is something our partners did not deign to undertake. For this reason, the Russian Federation on 25 February voted against the anti-Russian and anti-Ukrainian draft resolution of the Security Council. It is anti-Russian, this document. There's no need to explain why. It suffice uh, to have a cursory glance at the document. Why is it anti-Ukrainian, the document? Because this document, beyond any doubt, is inconsistent with the root interests of the Ukrainian people insofar as it is an attempt to salvage and to cement Ukraine, in Ukraine those authorities who brought the country to the brink of tragedy. And uh, this tragedy has been ongoing for eight years now. The main reason for our negative vote was not what was in the draft, but what was not included in the draft. Uh, if the sponsors were to attempt to make it even remotely balanced, then they would not have left out issues that need to be addressed in the context of the Ukrainian issue. Specifically, what was unaddressed was the way that the anti-constitutional coup in Ukraine, in, in Kiev, in February 2014, resulted in the Maidan junta seizing power and uh, uh, using it against the residents, shelling civilian areas with artillery pieces and multiple rocket launchers and uh, raining bombs on the people of Donbass and Lugansk. What was unaddressed was how the Ukrainian authorities, with the tolerance and indulgence of Western sponsors, consistently and cynically shirk their obligations to implement the Minsk agreement. At the same time, at the line of contact, Ukrainian death squads, first and foremost comprised of neo-Nazi and radical elements, methodically, day after day, shelled the residential areas of DPR and LPR, killing women, children, the elderly. This is ongoing today. How can we fail to mention the fact that uh, the Ukrainian nationalists have been perpetrating cries for all these eight years. The protesters uh, against Maidan and Odessa were burned alive. The peaceful protesters uh, and the Maidan were shot out, killed by snipers. The investigation into these tragedies by the Maidan regime was deliberately swept under the rug. At the same time, the perpetrators in the Odessa tragedy are well known. They are flaunting their presence. And uh, an alternative investigation into the reasons, uh, into the acknowledgement by these snipers unambiguously emphasizes that the slaughter on Independence Square was a provocation by the leaders of Maidan. We specifically last year held an informal Security Council ARIA formal meeting on this issue in order to provide colleagues at the Security Council with more information about this. However, in response, at best, we heard from Western pay, uh, Pons sponsors Merely hackneyed cliches about Russian propaganda. What kind of a text resolution on Ukraine can there be in the above mentioned uh, circumstances? Uh, there's a need to ensure that the text, there was a need for the text to have a frank assessment of the role in inflating the Ukrainian crisis played by Western colleagues who not only uh, were present in the uh, Minsk uh, negotiations, but effectively gave Kiev carte blanche to carry out any actions or steps that would be unthinkable for any civilized states. With tales being spun about the triumph of democracy in Ukraine, the Maidan authorities and nationalists engaged in, with impunity, murdering political opponents, persecuting opposition, shuttering opposition television outlets, uh, where there could be some relatively objective information provided. Six of those television channels were shuttered under Zelensky alone. And how could we fail to mention the fact that the country was flooded with weapons, which were then turned on peaceful civilians in Donbass. The responsibility for what is taking place right now lies at the feet of the current Ukrainian leadership as well as our Western colleagues. Uh, today, uh, t t t t today, we wish to emphasize that this has been inflated by the lies, deceit, misinformation from the Ukrainian armed forces and the uh, nationalist Western media outlets increasingly, shamelessly are portraying our military operation as a result, as, 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 as a negative consequence. We constantly hear lies, fakes about indiscriminate shelling of Ukrainian cities, hospitals, schools, kindergartens. The Russian army does not pose a threat to the civilians of Ukraine, we, uh, is not shelling civilian areas in areas and cities where Russian armed forces have taken control 
and these areas are uh, seeing citizens living their lives normally. Basic infrastructure, transportation, local inf infrastructure, and law and order is being upheld. And this includes the uh, uh, electrical station, the p uh, power plant, which is jointly uh, patrolled by Russian representatives and the special Ukrainian police who are present in the area. The Chernobyl uh, plant is also operating normally. The threat to the residents of Ukraine presently is posed by the Ukrainian nationalists who have effectively taken hostage the residents of Ukraine and they're using them. They're hiding themselves behind them and using them as human shields. There's a, an abundant evidence from ordinary Ukrainians that nationalists, despite their protests, have been deploying heavy equipment and multiple rocket launchers in residential areas. This is an egregious violation of international humanitarian law, which needs to be duly condemned. Effectively, this is the same tactic that is being used by ISIL terrorists. All of the responsibility for the possible repercussions lies at the feet of the Maidan regime. The residents of Ukraine are also threatened by the unfettered, uncontrolled uh, 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 radical elements giving to all of those who wish, including criminals who have specifically been released from prison. They are now receiving weapons, and the looters and moradors and criminals are now using them to target civilians. Uh, there is sufficient and abundant evidence uh, for, of this from residents of Kiev and other cities. This demonstrates the recklessness of Ukraine authorities vis-a-vis -vis their women. Just now, we received a letter from the Ukrainian uh, Human Rights civic organization, the uh, Social Policy and Social Protection Institute uh, uh, under the name of Irina Birezhnoi, uh, Birezhna. For eight years, it, this body has been informing international structures about how the neo-Nazism was born and proliferated in Ukraine and how it has been and continues to be held in, uh, at the state level. I briefly quote, today, the, op the, the apogee of the recklessness and lawlessness of neo-Nazis in Ukraine was uh, that uh, condemned criminals have been released from uh, prison. They have carried out uh, grave crimes, murders, etc. Only in Kiev, those who are willing receive 25,000 machine guns without any documentation. Killings, looting, crime is ongoing. Those so-called territorial defenders of, of Ukraine uh, 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 shot at a car killing killing parents and a girl a young girl two children are in hospital uh, critically wounded the former acting uh, president uh, following the unconstitutional coup in february of 2014 Turchinov called on all citizens who are not indifferent uh, to slaughter Russians uh, throughout the territory of the country. And this, um, despite the fact that uh, the most recent course, uh, 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 document for Ukraine in 2019 is, uh, sets out that 16, almost 17 percent, and actually far more people are Russian there. Now, against the Russian Federation in social networks, an information war has been unleashed insofar as evidence of destruction of civilian infrastructure uh, by a Russian military does not exist. Ukrainian uh, attacks and uh, and uh, accidental uh, attacks are a uh, bear out the fact that Ukrainian nationalists are carrying out this violence. Social networks have training manuals about how to create fakes to taint our military operation throughout Ukrainian social networks. There are 1.2 million such pieces of fake news uh, and the, the correspondence that was read out by the Ukrainian ambassador uh, that 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 uh, uh, that conversation that was read out is also a part of these facts and this is these fakes and this is well known we also did not support the draft resolution for this issue to move from the Security Council and uh, be ad addressed by the General Assembly special session today we uh, were guided by the fact that this measure uh, proposes that we register that the Security Council failed to comply to uphold its main responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security and at the same time there was not even a hint at an attempt to find a constructive solution at the Security Council, attempts to circumvent the position of the Russian Federation, to disregard the position of the Russian Federation, runs counter to the very bedrock of the United Nations. There's a need to find common ground, regardless of our Western partners' attempts to avoid this, including when they disregarded our legitimate concerns in connection with NATO policy and Western countries' breach of the core principles of the OSCE on indivisible 
responsibility of security. To conclude, Mr. President, I wish to state that the Russian Federation did not begin these hostilities. The hostilities uh, were unleashed by Ukraine against its own residents, the residents of Donbass, and all of those who are dissenters. Russia is seeking to end this war. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation.